So I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about the new Disney movie, A Wrinkle in Time. It's the new film that's directed by a very talented director in my point of view, and that's Ava DuVernay. And it's not as bad as everyone says it is, but it's still pretty bad nonetheless. And I understand this film's target audience is children and for what it offers to them, and I'm pretty sure they wouldn't think much of it. And I'm just trying to put myself in kids' shoes and remembering back to the time that I was a kid, because I liked movies like Space Jam, Homeward Bound, and even some of like the really cheesy 90s Disney movies that came out. And as a kid, someone who can give two shits about how a movie is made, these were all fine to me. They were entertaining, they were funny for the sense of humor I had back in the day, and I didn't think much of it. But returning back to those movies later as an adult, there's really not a whole lot of substance to it, and you can find a lot of stupidity within a lot of things done. And that's basically how I feel like how some audiences are going to react with A Wrinkle in Time. And since I am an adult, I'm no longer a kid, I'm going to try and talk about this movie in that particular mindset. Now, this movie has basic storytelling. You have a little girl in which her father, played by Chris Pine, suddenly disappears and she goes on this epic quest with her newly found friend and adoptive brother named Charles Wallace by reaching some of the unknown parts of the universe. They make certain stops throughout with Oprah, Weiss Witherspoon, and Spoon, and Minnie Kaling trying to find the father of the little girl and Charles Wallace. So it's up to her, the friend, and Charles Wallace to become warriors of light and save Chris Pine from the ever-growing darkness that's quickly reaching the universe. And that's essentially the entire plot. Pretty straightforward, nothing complex, just a simple, competent story. Now building up to that story was honestly quite a mess, considering this movie covers a girl's father leaving her and this girl questioning so many things that's going on in her life, you would think the movie would cover the internal pain tonally to really help you get behind this character and care for her. Instead, the movie plays a lot of the modern pop songs while she's walking through the hallways of her school, and of course, she's like the outsider kid where she's constantly getting bullied and picked on. It's like the movie is begging for the audience to really get behind the character, and the whole buildup of who she really is, and you know, it's it isn't all the way earned, so uh, there's that. And also her adoptive brother named Charles Wallace, who they, for some odd reason, has to call him by his full name. They couldn't just cut it down to Charles, something like most human beings do when they're calling somebody whom they know instead of like their name in its, in its entirety. It's like, come here, Charles Wallace. Charles Wallace, where are you? Don't give in, Charles Wallace. The, the light will guide you, Charles Wallace. It's like that infuriating. They... They just constantly say his full name, and it's just, it's just, it's dumb. Also, we have the kid from Pan, who I honestly feel bad for, because I want to see this kid succeed, just like most of the kid actors within this movie, but the only one who was really good was the newcomer Storm Reed, the main character of the movie. Story-wise, none of them felt out of place, and I'm pretty sure you can make the argument that the Pan kid was pretty useless in a sense, since he just randomly appears in the adventure. But again, like, he was given some stuff to do. Then we get to Oprah, Reese Witherspoon, and Mindy Kaling, who for the most part give all the right performances, I guess. Oprah's Oprah. I mean, that's all you need to know. Reese Witherspoon was a bit over the top with her whimsicalness, if that's even a word. And Mindy Kaling was... I don't know. She just doesn't really do jack shit in the movie. Like, the, the most things that she does is give a pair of crystal glasses to the main character. And that's about it. Out of all the light... I mean, the Guardians, I guess you can call them. Mindy Kaling was the one who I least liked the most. And Chris Pine is Chris Pine, which is fine, depending whether or not you like the guy or not. It's all up to you. Basically, he plays himself almost like every movie that he does. He's likable enough for the little time he has on screen. So, like, I don't know. As far as visuals go, which played a huge part in the movie, I'm a little mixed on them, to be honest, because some visuals looked incredible. It feels like the visual effects team really gave an actual shit when it came to like certain scenes such as like the open plain planet which I thought was pretty to look at when on the other hand you get other visual pieces where it looked like they didn't give a shit and I caught myself asking did they change their team midway through post-production most likely no but that's what it felt like as the movie progressed the visuals became more and more lackluster it also falls into the fault line of Ava DuVernay's part who's a director who really knows how to shoot something that's 100% practical environment and since this is something new to her it's clearly something that she isn't strongly suited for. Some of the shot composition when filming these actors in front of green screens was absolutely horrible which hold on the visual itself some of them were pretty to look at where where there are no actors present 
like the shot composition on that was good. But when the actors are either looking at something or performing in front of the green screen, that's where the weakness shines within Ava DuVernay's directing. Although I will give credit where credit is due, some scenes where it does require an actual production design, she's in her comfort zone and she shines as a director. But with the green screen, like I said before, it's as if she doesn't know what she's doing. Now, the first half of the movie was pretty consistent. Like I said, the girl's father goes missing, girl's pissed off, Charles Wallace happens, and they have to go on an adventure to find the father. You're seeing them go to different pit stops, and after a while, it gets less interesting since most of the time they're just fucking around. Like one part, like Reese Witherspoon turns into this giant leaf lady that can fly, and they're enjoying the scenery. I mean, which is fine, but at the same time, if, if I was the girl... I would immediately try and look for my long lost father that's been gone for four years. But once it gets to the second half, like the last 20 minutes of the movie, all the kid characters get dropped off at like the most evil part of the universe and for them to test their light, I mean, I guess. And this is like the literal definition of what the fuck is going on. But a part of me kind of liked it based on how weird and trippy it was from a visual standpoint. It sort of reminded me of Doctor Strange in a sense where some of these random visuals we would be happening for the sake of random visuals. And a, and a good majority of you would find it meaningless, but a little part of my brain kind of enjoyed it. If you're a fan of random shit just happening, you'll love the second half. If not, then you'll absolutely hate it. Again, since the movie is for kids, there's a nice little message to that specific audience based on the power of love and what it could accomplish. You know, stuff for the kids at home. But for the adults, it can get a bit cheesy and beats you over the head to a degree. Uh, and um, there's not a lot to like about this movie. Based on story structure, how random it is, and a lot of visuals and the acting, other parts of the visual effects team was solid and some production design was pretty good and it's about it. If you want to watch this movie, just check it out on Netflix if you can. It's not really worth seeing in theaters. It's not as bad as everyone says it is, but again, it's a pretty bad movie. But uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on Ava DuVernay's A Wrinkle in Time. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Mm -hmm.